Malcolm X once said that the most disrespected person was the black woman, and the most unprotected person was again the black woman. In some cases, many would agree that this is indeed still a reality today. Looking back through history, at least when I was growing up and learning about history, strong black women who stormed the battlefield wasn't something I'd ever been shown in my curriculum. To be completely honest, I'm pretty sure it's not shown in the curriculum in schools now. Other than Rosa Parks, it almost seems like history doesn't want to acknowledge some of the women I'm about to talk about, which is a damn shame because once I started digging into the history of black females beyond what I was taught, I found some pretty fascinating characters. So let's dive in. Yaa Santewa Yaa Santewa was the queen mother of the Edwesu tribe of the Ashanti in what is now modern day Ghana. She was said to have been an exceptionally brave warrior who in March 1900 constructed and led an army of thousands against the British colonial forces who occupied Ghana at the time. Yaa Santewa also led her army to prevent the British efforts to subjugate their people and to stop them from stealing the golden stool which was the Asante nation's spiritual symbol of unity and sovereignty. Yaa Santua was responsible for mobilizing the Asante troops, and for three months, she was able to lay siege to the British Fort of Kumasi. The colonizers at Fort Kumasi would have to summon for reinforcements in the form of several thousand troops and artillery to break up the siege. It would result in the exiling of Queen Yaa Santua and 15 of her closest advisors to Seychelles. She would live in exile until her death in October 1921. The siege at Fort Kumasi would also become known as Yaa Santewa's War, and was one of the last major wars on the continent of Africa to be led by a woman. Speaking of wars led by women, this brings me on to my next group of characters. The Dome Amazons The Dome Amazons, or the Mino, was an all-female military regiment of the Fon people, of the Kingdom of Dome in the present day Republic of Benin. This army of women existed from the 17th century all the way to the end of the 19th century. While European natives refer to the women soldiers as Amazons because of their similarity to the semi mythical Amazons of ancient Antolia, they called themselves Aoshi, otherwise known as the wives of kings, or Mino, meaning our mothers in the Fon language. They were extremely well trained and were instilled with a very aggressive attitude. They were ferocious fighters, with a reputation for decapitating soldiers in the middle of battle, as well as serving as torturers to those who were unfortunate enough to become their captives. Sedong Hongbe was one of the great leaders of the Mino. In 1851, she led an army of 6,000 women against the Egba fortress of Abeokuta. The Mino were armed with spears, bows and swords, but to their misfortune, the Egba had acquired a European cannons to repel them. Only about 1200 of the Mina survived the battle of the 6000 that went charging in. In 1890, King Behanzin used his Mino fighters alongside the male soldiers to battle the French forces during the First franco dahomeyan War. In this war, the French army lost several battles to the female warriors due to their skill in battle. It's said that the French were unprepared for the women's agility and their sheer ruthlessness. Amani Reynas Amani Reynas was one of the greatest queen mothers who ruled over the Mariotic kingdom of Kush in northeast Africa. She reigned over the kingdom between 40 BC to 10 BC. This was way back when Roman Emperor Augustus levied a tax on her people in 24 BC. Amani Reynas and her son Akinidad led an army of 30,000 men to sack the Roman fort in the Egyptian city of Aswan. To add salt to the wound, they also destroyed the statues of Caesar in Elephantine. Under orders from Augustus, the Roman general Petronius retaliated, but met strong resistance from Amani Reynas and her troops. After over three years of harsh fighting, the two parties agreed to negotiate a peace treaty. In the end, the Romans agreed to return their army to Egypt, as well as withdrawing their fort, giving the land they had taken back, and rescind the tax they had instated. The brave warrior queen Amani Reynas is remembered for her loyal combat, for she would actually go into battle side by side with her own soldiers. She was blinded in one eye after she was wounded by a Roman, however the full extent of her injuries 
or the harm she had received at the hands of the Romans has yet to be disclosed, since the account of the war, written in Mariotic script, has not yet been fully decoded. Carlotta Lukumi Carlotta was kidnapped from her Yoruba tribe, brought in chains to Cuba as a child, and forced into slavery in the city of Matanzas, where she worked to harvest and process sugarcane under brutal conditions. Despite her misfortune, she was described as being bright, musical, determined, and smart. In 1843, she and another enslaved woman named Fermina led an organized rebellion at the sugar plantation. Fermina, though, was locked up after her plans for the rebellion were discovered. Using talking trumps to secretly communicate, Carlotta and her fellow warriors freed Fermina and dozens of others, and went on to wage a well-organized armed uprising against at least five brutal slave plantation operations in the area. Carlotta's brave battle went on for one year before she was captured, tortured, and then executed by Spanish landowners. Queen Zinga Mbande Queen Zinga Mbande was a highly intelligent and powerful 17th century ruler of the Dongo and Mantambo kingdoms, which is now modern-day Angola. Around the turn of the 17th century, Nzinga fearlessly and cleverly fought for the freedom of her kingdoms against the Portuguese, who were colonizing the Central African coast at the time to control the slave trade. To build up her kingdom's military, Nzinga offered sanctuary to runaway slaves and Portuguese-trained African soldiers. She stirred up quite the rebellion amongst the people still left in Ndongo, which had then come under the rule of the Portuguese. Zinga also formed an alliance with the Dutch against the Portuguese. However, their combined forces were not enough to drive the Portuguese out. After retreating to Matamba again, Nzinga started to focus on developing the kingdom as a trading power and a gateway to the Central African interior. At the time of Nzinga's death in 1661, at the age of 81, Matamba had become a powerful kingdom that managed to resist Portuguese colonization attempts for an extended period of time. Nzinga's kingdom was only integrated into Angola in the late 19th century. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, then do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about these badass ladies from history and stay tuned for more black history. Until the next time guys.